If your Instagram followers aren't growing as quickly as you'd like, then you're probably making at least one of these mistakes in your bio. There are successful artists that come into two categories. There are the artists that are just so established that they don't even need to think about what they put in their bio. People are going to follow them anyway because they are the biggest artists in the world. And then there are successful emerging artists who are growing and they need to put something in their bio that shows a little bit about their personality and that is why people follow them. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all the mistakes that I see artists making. And some of these artists are signed to major labels. They are successful in one area, but they're just not able to convert it to Instagram followers. And usually it is because of their bio, not just their content. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you suggestions on what you can put in your bio to convert your profile visits into followers. The bio is key to getting new followers on Instagram. It may seem like such an insignificant part of setting up your Instagram profile, but say for whatever reason, someone has hit your profile. You now need to give them a reason to follow your account. And if you can't give them a reason, then all of your efforts to get them to that account in the first place have been a complete waste of time. So I'm gonna outline four mistakes that I see artists making in their Instagram bio. And I'm not gonna blame any artist for making this mistake. It's a really easy mistake to make because you're looking at established artists for inspiration. The problem here is that these established artists already have a name for themselves. So Dua Lipa doesn't need to think about a bio to attract followers. They've already decided they're going to follow when they hit the profile. But as an emerging artist, they have not decided yet. Whether they've come from your Spotify, whether they've come for a piece of content, they are still deciding whether they're going to follow. The first one is, just putting your track in the bio and nothing else. Usually in capitals, it says out now, the track title, and then asking people to go stream it. And this makes no sense to me because all of your engaged audience are going to go and stream it anyway. And then people who've hit your profile have probably already heard the track. They've probably come from Spotify. So if you're offering nothing else but trying to send them back to Spotify, you're basically saying you have nothing else about you as an artist. The next one is just putting tour dates in the bio. And I might for some artists, if you're big enough, give you a pass on this one, but People aren't invested enough about your tour. Established artists can get away with this. If you're a huge artist and people go to your profile, and their likelihood is that they are going to be interested in your tour. But if you've got shows coming up, there is no point in telling people what, when your next show is. You can do that on your feed or on your stories, but you, there's no point in doing it in your bio because when people read your bio, they're trying to find out what you are about, not when your next show is. The third one is, a bio which says what kind of artist you are, like the genre or describing what your music is like, but that's not enough to get people to follow you on Instagram. So they might, you might get a stream out of it potentially, but you're not gonna get a follower and a lifelong fan. When someone hits your profile, you really want to be able to get them to be a lifelong fan. And there are plenty opportunities to say what you're like as an artist. All they'll have to do is scan a little bit of your content to get a vibe about what you're about. And I'm sure you'll have lots of clips of your tracks on your feed or on your stories. So people will hear your track and get an understanding of you as an artist and what your music is like. The fourth one is probably my biggest pet hate of all, which is bragging about your streams or just general bragging. It looks very needy and like you need validation. So. If you've got 10,000 streams on a track, maybe the person who's hit your profile will think that's low and you're not worth streaming the track. Maybe you've got a million and they don't feel very special because millions of other people streamed the track anyway and they're looking for emerging artists and they get a buzz out of finding new artists. So what you have to think about is they've already hit your profile. So there's no point in trying to brag or validate yourself by saying what radio stations you've been on, what press you've got, because it doesn't matter. They're on your profile. All you've got to do now is get them to hit the follow button. Your existing followers are not gonna go back to your profile. You don't go to an artist's profile 
after seeing a post on the feed, for example, or just to see what they're up to in case they've changed their bio. The only people who read your bio are people who are considering following you. And what most of those points have in common is that you're asking for an investment from the visitor of your profile. So this is the absolute worst time you should ask for an investment because you should be giving to them. And if you think about it, none of your existing followers are ever going to hit your profile. They're not gonna say, oh, I wonder if they've changed their bio because they've just posted something on the feed. Let's go have a look to see what the bio says. It's all for people who are potentially thinking about following you. And you should always be thinking about that. Don't ask for something from them at this point. You need to be giving them more, something that is going to push them over the edge. And then eventually hit follow. And you need to think about the journey in which they've undertaken in order to hit your profile. So this person has hit your profile and considering following you. They've either come from one of three places. One, they've heard your track on Spotify, loved the music and wanted to know more about you as an artist. So they went to the Spotify, the about section and they hit the Instagram button and they are considering following you and looking at your content. The second point is they've stumbled on a piece of your content. So you've taken the advice on this YouTube channel and creating content for yourself as an artist and maybe it's been shared by a big page, maybe it's trending on the explore page or they are following a certain hashtag and then they want to see what you're about as an artist. And then thirdly, their friend has probably shared your profile with them. And remember, they shared the profile. Mostly when you are sharing music with your friends, you will send a YouTube link or a Spotify link, but you won't send the Instagram profile of that artist. And if they haven't heard your music, then they're here for a different reason. They're here for the content. And then you have to get them invested enough in you in order to go and stream your track. And a lot of artists will say, well, I can't link people. So that's the only place I can link people to my music. And if you get people invested enough, they will go and stream your track. They will find it. They will find it on YouTube. They will find it on Spotify. The search functions are amazing. Whatever you put in, it will find it. So you are wasting your opportunity by putting things in the bio that aren't relevant or aren't helping to get people to follow you. So things you do need to have in your bio is you need to give people an idea of what you're about as an artist. And whether that's through an inspirational quote from someone else, or perhaps a quote that you live your life by. Or you can give them an idea of the type of content to expect when they follow you. So you can describe the content that you create, and then when they look at your content on the feed, it makes sense and they understand it post by post. And that's how they know what they are going to follow because they like their content, which has been accompanied probably by listening to your music. Another thing you can do is just something quirky or funny which shows your sense of humor and your personality. An example of this is Lauren Hibbard who has in her bio that she's taken a poo in every venue she's ever played at. And on that theme, you can also have challenges or ongoing themes where, for example, say you are playing a show at every town in your country. And that gives an example of the kind of artist you are and also what to expect from your content. So there is already an ongoing theme there. But the key is you need to be unique with it. You need to show your personality and don't try too hard. Just show, project who you are because that is what your content is going to represent. If they don't like who you are, then it doesn't matter because they were never going to like your content and they're never going to engage. So be extreme with it. Don't be reserved. Don't be worried about putting off a certain segment of the market. Find your niche, find your fan base that absolutely love you and then in your bio, have something bold that is gonna get rid of the people who aren't going to love you and keep the people who are going to love you. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more music marketing videos like this, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.